Hi everyone, this is Jack Yang from Visual Paradigm. In this video series, I'm going to demonstrate the use of Visual Paradigm in performing use case analysis. In the first lesson, we will talk about how to identify actors and use cases using textual analysis. Before I start the demonstration, I want to give a brief outline of the whole demonstration. The demonstration consists of five lessons. The first lesson is about identifying actors and use cases using textual analysis. Textual analysis is the process to extract important information from a text. We will use this method in finding out the actors and use cases of a system. In lesson 2, we will form a use case diagram with the actors and use cases identified. The result is an initial use case model. In lesson 2, we've identified a set of use cases. To aim for completing all of them at one time may seem impractical. That's why we need to go through a prioritization process to determine which use cases to do first and which ones come next. In lesson 3, we will prioritize the use cases based on the importance and urgency. We know the priority of use cases. It's time to start working on those high priority use cases. By discussing with the corresponding stakeholders and understanding their needs, we can describe the use cases in a bit more detail. This includes documenting the precondition, postcondition, and assumptions of the use case. And these will be covered in lesson 4. The final lesson is about documenting the scenarios of a use case in detail. Discussions will be performed with the stakeholders to find out the possible scenarios in achieving the use cases. For example, if the use case is about buying something online, there might be one scenario for making payments through credit card, and another scenario for making payments through PayPal. These scenarios will be captured and documented as a set of events flow of the use case. Stakeholders can then review, comment on, and confirm the proposal. Once the flow of events is confirmed, the team can move on to identifying the requirements of the system, as well as to perform backlog management. That's the end of use case analysis. Throughout the lessons, a case study will be used in demonstration. The case study we use is a university library management system called Starfish. It's built 20 years ago and is in need of a re-engineering in order to satisfy the latest library service needs. This is the problem statement of the re-engineering project. Let's take a look. The library of the University of Buttonwood was established in 1984 to meet the information needs of students and teachers. The Starfish library management system of the university was developed in late 80s. Throughout all these years, there were no major enhancements made to the system in supporting the latest library service needs. These needs include the ability to handle borrowing and returning of books using barcode scanner, book reservation, updates of patron profile, advanced book searching, etc. We will go through this problem statement again in the demonstration, so I'll just stop here. Okay, let's start our demonstration. The first lesson, identifying actors and use cases using textual analysis. This is visual paradigm. In this demonstration, we will talk about the use of textual analysis in identifying actors and use cases. Textual analysis is a method to extract important ideas and concepts from a textual description of a problem. By using this technique, you can identify the major actors and use cases in forming a use case model. The first step is to create a new textual analysis editor. Select the diagram tab from the application toolbar. Click the new button. Select textual analysis. And click next. Give it a name. I'm going to analyze the problem statement, so I name it problem statement. This creates a blank text. What I have to do now is to enter the text for analysis. I can type the text or to copy and paste from an external source or to import from a text file or HTML file. In this demonstration, I just type the problem statement. 
The Library of University of Buttonwood was established in 1984 to meet the information needs of students of the four departments. So I finished entering the um, prompt statement here. I just reduced the font size a little bit. Here I have a text. I should go through the text, study the contents, and to identify the actors and use cases. I'll go through the problem statement and identify the actors first. An actor is a specific role played by a system user. It represents a category of users who share the same goals when using the system. The problem statement say, the library was established in 1984 to meet the information needs of students and teachers. Okay, students and teachers are seemingly two uses of the library management system. I'm going to extract them from the passage to become candidate actors. They are just candidates. I will reveal them later on when I finish the analysis process. At this point, I just try to identify those potential actors first. Select the text students, right click on it, select actor. So you see, the occurrences of the word students is highlighted in the text. The word students appear twice in the passage. And the pane below the text lists the candidate objects extracted from the text. Okay, I just continue by extracting the word teachers as the second candidate actor. I just keep reading the problem statement and come across the third candidate actor, patron. I extract it to become a candidate actor. The fourth one, Librarian. Again, I extract it as a candidate actor. I finished reading the prompt statement and have identified four candidate actors. The next step is to extract candidate use cases from the prompt statement. A use case is a high level business goal that can be met by the system. It represents a substantial piece of functionality provided by the system. I'll go through the prompt statement again to look for the candidate's use cases. Here is a candidate. This phrase say that the current system lacks the ability to handle borrowing and returning of books using barcode scanner. This might be a use case because the user may want the new system to support borrowing and returning of books using barcode scanner. So I just highlight the word borrowing and extract it as a candidate's use case. Repeat the same steps on the word returning. The next candidate, book reservation. Again, I extract it as a candidate use case. Update of page from profile, another candidate. Advanced book searching is also a candidate use case. A download ebooks, loan extension. According to the problem statement, there is also a lack of cataloging features that allows the librarian to add and delete book records in the system. I suppose add and delete books are two candidate's use cases. I'll just extract them as candidate's use cases first. Highlight the word add and extract it as a candidate's use case. Do the same on delete book records. Alright, I've finished identifying all the candidate's actors and use cases. The next step is to walk through the list of candidates to determine whether they are really actors and use cases of the system. I'll go through them one by one. The first one, students. Students are users of the system, of the library management system, so it's an actor. Instead of naming the actor as students, the extracted text, I will name it as student in singular. I will also capitalize the first letter as I will give a brief description, but this is optional. Teachers are also users of the system. I just rename teachers to teacher and enter the description. Patron represents a user role, so I regard it as an actor as well. So I give it the name Patron with capital letter P. Describe it. Librarian. 
Of course, Librarian is enacted because Librarian uses the cataloging features provided by the library management system. Okay, here comes the use cases. First one, borrowing. Borrowing stands for the ability to handle borrowing of books using barcode scanner. You may want to confirm with the stakeholders to see if this is what they need. Let's say if this is a feature they want, so this is a use case of the system. I will just rename borrowing to borrow books and give a description. Returning. Returning is also a use case. I will rename the use case as return books. By the way, this is a convention to name a use case as a verb or a verb phrase. I'm not going to walk through each candidate one by one. I'll just repeat the steps to study and to determine whether they are actors and use cases of the system. I've done. I've finished identifying the actors and use cases of the system by using textual analysis. In the next lesson, I will show you how to form a use case diagram with these actors and use cases. See you in the next lesson. Goodbye.